Excellent. Okay. Welcome everyone to Trey's webinar. Today we're going to be taking a look at data transformations and making them a breeze with Jay Sonata. Uh, my name is Zane, as mentioned previously. I am an automation architect at Trey. Uh, some, you know, a little bit uh, about myself. My favorite activities include hiking and backpacking. Uh, I'm a big fan of basketball and who doesn't love a good video game in their time off. Uh, favorite foods, that's actually not an apple. It's a pomegranate, but there is no emoji for pomegranate. So got to make do with what you got. Uh, everyone loves pizza and a good bowl of ramen is something I always enjoy. As for my favorite build, uh, I actually really enjoy the HR onboarding process. Uh, mostly because it was the first build that I made during my time at Trey. Uh, so it's a special place in my heart. We also have a couple other people on the call with us today. We have Austin and Grant, both of which are on my team, both of which are automation architects as well. They're going to be in the chat. They're going to be helping out. If you have any questions, they'll probably be the ones responding to you uh, directly in chat. Now, quickly before we begin today, there are a couple of resources that we're going to be using that might be helpful to you. First of all, the JSON Transform Connector is the actual connector we're going to be using in the platform today. We have our documentation for that on our documentation site, so you can check that out. We're also going to be using the JSONata Playground, which is a sandbox that you can find online. Looks just like this. Uh, and then the third one that's not listed here is actually a Google Sheet. Now, this Google Sheet is going to provide you all with some uh, links, some copy pasting material that you can use to follow along with us. Uh, Austin or Grant should be posting the link to this uh, Google Sheet in the chat so you can grab it from there. All right, introducing JSONata. What is JSONata? JSONata is an open source query language uh, and it's a transformation language used to modify JSON data. So uh, for those who are unfamiliar with JSON, that is basically the love language of Trey, as we like to call it. It's just a way that you can structure information, put it all together in one spot to have it be easily referenceable, right? We're going to be talking about JSON a lot. We're going to be talking about objects a lot. That's just the data we're going to be working with today. Now, what you can do with JSONata is uh, very broad. It's a language that allows itself to be flexible in a lot of different ways. You can extract values. You can reduce uh, multiple values down to one value. You can modify JSON structure. You can combine values to make new values. It's very broad in what you can do. Today, we're going to be focusing on just the basics of it to get you introduced to the concept of what is JSONata, uh, not getting too into the weeds with the advanced stuff you can do with it. Certainly, we're going to be posting in our Slack community channel. So if you're not part of our Slack community, Go ahead and reach out to uh, Grant and, and Austin, and they can help you out there. Um, and we're going to have a lot more complex or useful tools that you might want to use uh, in that Slack after the call. So what is what are JSONata actions, right? If you have a basic, not a basic, an advanced JSON structure here, uh, you can do declarative statements on how you want an object to change or what you actually want to do with it, right? This is an example of a statement that you're making with this JSON object. So let's actually go ahead and go into the exerciser to show you what I'm talking about. So uh, you all should hopefully have this link by now. If you don't, it's try.jsonata.org. And this is going to provide you with some dummy data that just exists and it's easy to play with. So what you want to do is in this right-hand side here, you can actually type out the declarative statement of what you're trying to do. So let's pick an example. I want to collect all the SKU numbers from this JSON object, right? All of these, there's multiple of them. How am I going to do that? Well, I can list out down to where the data is stored and simply get that information. So let's do a count, right? That's the top key, dot order, dot product dot description oh that's good excuse me look at that so what, what am i doing here this is the output we have all of the different SKUs listed in this output and i'm basically just saying in jsonata the path to the data that i want right and it's going to make some um 
inferences on how you're working with it. So we have a count top object. We have order, which is actually an array. Notice that this data is very nested. There are objects with arrays in them, with other objects in them. It's structured in a way uh, that is very complex. But JSONata is going to infer what you're trying to do. Oh, order is an array. We're going to want all the values in that array, right? Uh, and then we go to product, which is again an array, uh, and then get the SKU numbers from that, right? So the, these, what you can do with it is very broad, and this is just an example of how you can work with the data, show you what the tool looks like. But let's get back into the uh, presentation. So when should you use JSONata? Obviously within Tray, there's lots of different ways that you can work with the data. Um, you can use native connectors, you can do a JSON or a JavaScript step that's actually scripted out JavaScript, or you can use JSONata. So you're likely gonna be tasked with manipulating data that's passing through the platform. That's oftentimes a big thing that's happening. The three main values you wanna think about, should I be using JSONata for this data manipulation or transformation? is how complex is the transformation you're working with, right? Are you just being asked to do one simple step or many steps to the data? Uh, within Tray, how many number, what's the number of regular steps that you might have to take in order to complete the same task? If you're looping over a bunch of uh, objects or arrays, if you are doing a lot of if statements or you're doing a lot of branching, right? All of these might be easier to use JSONata and use a simple one or two step JSONata connector as opposed to 10 different things in the platform. And the final one is how nested is the data that you want to work with? Uh, as I showed in the example in the JSON sandbox tool, sometimes data is very nested and, and it's set up in a sort of obscuring way for the data that you actually care about to be extracted out of. So all of these, the more complex, the more number of steps, the more nested, are all reasons why you might want to consider JSONata. So today, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing three different JSONata actions in Tray. We're going to be building them from scratch, uh, and we're going to allow you to build along with us, and you can actually verify uh, if your JSONata is working due to the uh, extra values we have in our Google Sheet, which we'll share with you. I, uh, Austin, has it already been shared? Sorry, I don't have the uh, chat. Pulled yeah, up. it's in the chat. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just get into it. The first one we're going to be doing is grabbing values out of uh, a JSON structure, which I showed you in the sandbox tool, but we're going to be doing it within Tray. Then we're going to be grabbing unique values, reducing down to just ones that are unique and not repetitive. And then we're going to be doing a more complex one, which is nesting JSON auto queries into a single action. So doing multiple things all within one step in JSON auto. So I'm gonna give everyone a second to open up Tray if you haven't gotten that already. Go ahead and log in, create a new workspace and just set it up to be a manual trigger. I'm gonna give everyone about 30 seconds to do that. Uh, and while that is happening, I'll briefly walk over the Google Sheet that we have shared with you all. So to start things off, there are a couple tabs down here, main resources, example one, example two, and example three. Uh, the main resources are going to provide you with links to the JSON auto documentation, link to the actual sandbox environment, and then uh, uh, documentation from our end on the JSON transformer connector. In example one, this is the one we're going to be starting with. Notice that there are two different things. One, we have this uh, B2 step right here that's actually JSON in itself, we're gonna be using this within Tray. The other one uh, is the solution to the, the challenge we're presenting right now. So if you wanna look ahead, you can look at this. We recommend trying to figure it out yourself, um, but this is a helpful way to, you know, if you get stuck or something, you can just review this really quickly to see uh, what the correct answer is. Okay, great. So. Hopefully you all are at a point where you're in tray, you have a workflow with a manual trigger. So what we're going to do is the way that we've set this up is we're actually going to be using a couple different connectors within tray that's going to provide you all with a, a set data structure of, of data uh, that we all can use at the same time. So go ahead and add a new step. That is the training, training Salesforce step. 
And the first thing you're going to want to do, as is true with all steps in Tray, is authenticate. So you can go ahead. Uh, if you already have an existing authentication, if you've done these before, you will. But if you don't, that's totally fine. Just go ahead and make a new one. All you have to do is create your email. There's no extra authentication steps that need to happen. This is just for our end to see who's using the uh, connector. Once your connector is authenticated, you go to the step inputs. What this is going to do, it's going to output a, just an object of data that we care about and we're going to use today. So you're going to be using the find records operation and you're going to be using the contact record type. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the workflow and let's see what the data is that we're going to be working with. Lovely. Okay. So what this is, this is just a, uh, a replica of data that you'd get from Salesforce. This is just your, you know, your CRM chunk of data. What it is, it's a record of contacts, of contacts uh, from Salesforce, right? So this is what we're going to be working with. Now, the problem, the challenge we're going to have is I want to get everyone's email, right? That's a, a pretty simple business level thing of I want to collect everybody's emails. Now, with Intray, there are ways to do this, right? We do have list helpers. And in this list helper, there's an action called pluck. This is a pretty common tool that a lot of people use on the platform. A lot of people who are on the call today might be familiar with it. If you're not, that's totally fine. Now you know about it. Uh, and what this does, you pick the list of data, right? These records. And then you pick the key that you want to pluck out of it, right? That's what this step does. We're not going to use this today. We're going to be using the JSON auto transformer, but just to ground you in a location you might be familiar with, this is sort of what we're doing. The next step we're going to add is the JSON transformer right here, JSON transformer. Now, this is the step that we're actually going to be doing our JSON auto queries with, right? You can see here this JSON auto query. This is where you're actually going to type the decor declarative statement that you want to do. The JSON data is the values that we're going to be going through and trying to do our declarative statement on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the sandbox to first identify what I want to do and then take the answer that we find in the sandbox and put it into tray. So I've just copied this output. You can do that yourself and just paste it into the exerciser. Excellent. Now, if you remember, I said what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the emails from every record. So how do we go about doing that? If we're being declarative in nature, we're just going to say records dot email. It's as easy as that, right? Look at that. We already have all the emails in a nice, beautiful list ready to go for us. And it, that, that's how easy JSON auto is. It's, it's pretty remarkable, honestly. So if our JSON auto query is going to be records.email, we need to make sure that the data we're working with is going to be linked appropriately. So for the purposes specifically of this call, I'm going to ask you to make uh, a property here that says records. So the JSON data, instead of just using the connector like this and going here, make a property that says records and then bring it over here to records. The whole purpose of this is just to make sure that the inputs and outputs for these steps match for the final step, which we're going to show right now. Notice that we have paste at the end of your workflow this JSON data. So I'm going to be copying this, uh, this JSON here. This is B2, right? Just copy the entire cell. And in tray, I'm going to right click right here, paste. Look at that. So the JSON in the Excel sheet is actually a connector step that we've pre-configured in tray. And notice here on the right hand side, we're sending, we're basically sending your JSON output, the response that you get from this step 
to a webhook that we're listening to that will verify whether or not your output is the correct one that we think you should get, right? Um, the only thing you need to add here is your email. You can go ahead and fill that out. Uh, if you fill this out, uh, Austin and Grant, who are watching behind the scenes, can look at your inputs that are going through and can tell you, you know, whether whether things are, are good or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run this, right? Let's, we have my records. We have a records.email. Let's run the workflow. Great. We're seeing uh, some people come through and it looks like their examples are matching. So great stuff. Excellent. Excellent work, people. So validate JSON. The output from this, it could be one of a couple things. Code 200, for those who aren't aware, means success. If you have a status code other than 200, might be 400. Um, that means something might have gone wrong. You might have sent the wrong data through. Um, no worries if you did. We can follow up with you later. Uh, but the, you know you should be getting 200 if you follow the steps. So this is a very basic, straightforward transformation, right? It's just the exact same as pluck. Uh, from our list helper. And you might be asking, well, Zane, why don't I just use Pluck? And you can, right? This is supposed to be a very brief introduction. The value of JSONata comes in once the actions you're trying to do become more complex, right? Referring back to our slideshow, the complexity of the ask, the nested values of the structure, uh, and how many steps do you think it's going to have to take in tray for you to do that action? These are all the things you should be thinking about when working with uh, JSONata. So let's go into our second example. Our second example is going to be using the same oops, training data. So training Salesforce. Make sure we authenticate. And we're still going to be working with contacts. Now, let's uh, run this again and take a look at the data again. Is Zane, when you um, go through this, would you mind just showing uh, the authentication for the training step and that it only requires an email? And then also uh, just showing us when you get to the validation, how to paste in from the Google Sheet again, as I think a few people trickled in late and might need reminders as you did for example one and example two. Yes, definitely. Um, so real briefly, uh, going over the Google Sheet again, uh, Austin should be sharing this in the chat. If he hasn't, he can do it one more time. This Google Sheet is a collection of important pieces uh, of information that we're using throughout this webinar. So there's main resources, and then for each example we're working on, additional resources. In the main resources, you're going to have a link to the JSONata Playground. This is just an, a free website you can go to, paste any data, and work with it using JSONata as well as documentation for JSONata and our own internal documentation. We're gonna be working, uh, starting with example two here. There are There is a uh, solution link explaining the actual answer to the challenge we're working with, as well as this JSON data, which is actually a connector that we have pre-made for you that you can copy and paste directly the entire cell, this B2, if you just copy this, we're gonna be pasting it in tray in a little bit, and I'll explain that one more time when we get there. So example two, we are working with the training Salesforce connector. You can do, search for it by going training, training Salesforce, just like that. And in the authentication, all you have to do is make a new authentication because every connector in Tray requires authentications. And you can simply just add your email. That's all you have to do to authenticate. And it's okay if you have multiple, uh, that you shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, great. So we have our training Salesforce connector. We're finding records, we're finding contacts, right? We ran that data, and this is the same data that we were using last time. Let's have a different challenge this time. Let's say, I wanna know all of the regions that these contacts are in, right? There's EMEA, with, uh, you know, Europe, Middle East, uh, Asia, Africa, excuse me, there's NAM, North America, right? There's different regions of the world 
and we want to reduce them to not have duplicates and just show me what are all the regions that we have without duplications. That's our challenge. So let's go ahead, copy this, throw it in the exerciser. Oh, it's the exact same. So let's think about this. We want to find the regions, right? So that would be records dot region double underscore C. Wow. Look at these. Lots of duplicates, lots of duplicates. Um, so we want to have a step that actually is uh, reducing these down to be distinct, right? Uh, excuse me one second here. Great. So uh, there is actions you can perform or, or different functions basically that are underneath JSONADA that you can call. The way you do that is having a dollar sign, dollar sign and then function. And this one happens to be called distinct, right? We're looking for distinct values here. Uh, you have distinct and then you just wrap the value you care about in parentheses. Boom, look at that. Now we just have EMEA, APAC, and NAM, right? This distinct value eliminates all the others and just gives you one of each, which is, again, super helpful. Once you've learned it once, it's great to use. You're filtering down. So let's take this, put it back into, oh, let's add the JSON transformer step here. So we know that this is the JSON auto query we want to use. Let's make sure our data aligns with this records.region. So let's go ahead and add our property to the JSON data, call it records, and then map the records data to the records array. Lovely. So if we run this, we should see in tray the same output we got from the sandbox. And again, you don't have to use the sandbox, but it's certainly just easier to mull around and play with. You have your data, you can quickly get an answer for it instead of running through tray each time. Uh, it's just a, a handy way to get sort of ahead of the curve and get answers quickly. Great. So the last thing we want to do, we have our filtered, reduced down uh, regions. Let's grab this B2. Make sure you're an example two, B2, copy and paste. You should see example number two here. Go ahead and add your email again to this step. Uh, and we should be able to run this and get a response back. Awesome. Thanks, Zane. Do you mind just um, pointing out very clearly exactly where people can throw their email as we're seeing, for example, to a lot less emails and some mm -hmm. 400s. And so it helps us if y'all enter your email there so that we can kind of hit you up and say, uh, what you might need to do in order to get to green. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Really quickly, we have the validate JSON step. When you click on it, you have this pop up on the right side. There's this query parameter that says email. If you wouldn't mind adding your email right there. That would help. Also, please keep in mind, make sure you're not using the old validate JSON from the previous example. They actually have different values. So make sure you're not using example one and you are using the example to copy paste. Another or way they can just update that. the query parameter. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yep. I was gonna say, you can just change this to 02 instead of 01. Cool, and while we're waiting for results to roll in, there was one other question from Ava that I thought we might wanna echo a little bit to the rest of the group. Why is it, can you remind us that we don't map directly to records from the JSON transformer and we add a um, records property beforehand. Do you mind walking through that one more time? Yeah, so this is just um, a helpful tool that we have on our side, right? This validate JSON step is expecting the data to come through in a very specific way. And so by having it set up to be calling the records, we can just use this records.region right here because we uh, are basically taking this Salesforce one records. If we just use that as the output, we're actually going to be working with an array, right? And so by declaring the JSON data to have a records object, or have the JSON data be an object with the records key existing within it, all of a sudden, we now have an object 
with the records key being an array. So it just it helps for our own internal tools to make sure that we're validating correctly. In theory, you can just map the JSON data to something and just make sure that whatever data you're working with is looking at the correct JSON path or endpoint to get the data correctly out of it, right? Yep, great point, Zane. And it also um, helps translate between the exerciser and tray a little bit more seamlessly, as if you do copy and paste between the two, which we recommend. Um, having that extra property built in can make it easier to copy paste between the two because your query seems con stays consistent between the two. Um, cool. So the only people that we're seeing a 400 with at this point are people not including the emails. So I think we're we're all set on exercise two. And uh, we'll keep answering your questions in the chat. Thanks. Uh, I do see one question from Jonathan. Is part of this webinar going to be going over how to manipulate the data and then do bulk functions? Great question. We're just touching on lighter concepts right now. We actually, our next uh, example is going to be multiple functions within one JSONata call. Um, for the more complex ones, such as actually outputting restructured entire objects, that's something that would be a great question to ask in our Slack community. We're going to have further examples posted there after this webinar, so you can follow up there. Okay, so example three. This one is going to be slightly different than our first two examples in that we have both uh, a starting um, uh, connector we're going to be adding as well as an ending connector that we're going to be using to validate. So if you come to example three, in our uh, Google Sheet, B2, we're going to copy that and paste it in here. You should see get Slack trigger example. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we're going to be working with different data here. Uh, and this is something you might expect from an actual API call, right? We have that response, status code, and then body of data, et cetera. Now, uh, I'm going to really quickly also just copy paste this uh, ending connector here, just make sure we have it. Paste it right here. And then let's talk about what we're trying to do in this example. So what if we want to get just one piece of a string in this whole list of data, right? Let's say we want to grab this campaign ID. Right, it's in a big nested object, uh, and we want to filter down to just grab this. What does that look like? Let's copy this and throw it in our JSON auto exerciser. So let's think about this. The first thing we want to do is find it here. This is in text, so this is going to be response dot body dot data dot text. Ooh, wait a minute. We got an array. So in this body.data.txt, body.data, body.data is an array. And in that array, there are objects, multiple objects with the dot text key. So it's grabbing each of those objects that exist, right? We have text in this one, text in this one, text in this one. So we actually want to be uh, filtering this down, right? So we care about this one. And so what we want to do is find the one that has campaign ID, because none of the other texts have that, right? So what if we try, let's do square brackets here, and we're going to be doing another one of the JSON auto functions you can do, contains, right? Dollar sign contains, and then parentheses. What do we care about? We care about the text key containing, what's the text? Cam campaign ID. Lovely, look at that. So we had a bunch of different text keys, right? So we're saying, ooh, which text key contains the campaign ID? This is the one that we want. Great, lovely. Uh, we want to get the text field from this. So let's do a dot text after this. Aha, we have just the text we care about. But we want this. We don't want this, right? So we have 
this declarative statement, we have a function that's doing it, but we actually want just this substring. Well, great news, JSONATA has another function, dollar sign sub string. Uh, oh, sorry, substring after. So substring after is going to be getting all of the substring after a certain chunk of text. But then we also are going to need, what's the other value here? Excuse me one second. So in this substring after, we are declaring the string that we have, right? We found the text to be the, comp the campaign ID and then the value we care about. So we're going to have substring after parentheses at the front, parentheses at the end. And then after text, we're putting a comma. The actual text that we're going after is going to be that, uh, what was it, star campaign ID. And then we have, what, what is that? A colon and then another star in a space. Lovely. So we're saying after this text, get this value. Congratulations, you've grabbed the ID, right? And this is getting a little bit more complex. So don't worry if it's taking you a second to break down what's happening. We have a function, we have a sub function, and we're getting different values out of it. So we didn't want to get too into the weeds with JSON audit. It's, extreme, it's extremely powerful in what you can do. Uh, but we just want to show you that there are more complex things that you can grab. So I'm going to take this value right here. Uh, we're going to have a JSON transformer step. And throw that query in. So let's just make sure that our data is mapped appropriately there. The value we care about this time is actually not records. It's going to be response. Right, because the uh, first key that we care about here is the response key from this output step. Lovely. So we have the substring collection. We've got our contains. We're mapping from the uh, original Slack notification here. And then this uh, validate JSON step, make sure to add your email. It should be example number three, email. Let's go ahead and run it. Validate JSON, success, 200. Did it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give everyone a few seconds to run this themselves. Uh, but this was the end of our third example. Now, obviously, we only used two of the functions that exist underneath JSONATA, but there are many functions you can use. You can do mapping functions, reducing. Uh, there, You can do math problems, right? If we go back to JSONATA exercise and refresh it. The starting example they have here is this, uh, you know, example data, and then they're doing a sum. So you can do math. You can add texts together, right? You can build entire new objects based off of existing data in old objects. You can put strings together, put them into an array, put that into an object, and then have a new object output, right? All this is doable. You just have to know JSONATA, and this is a brief introduction to uh, the tool and how you can use it in Tray. So at this point, I'm going to open it up um, to the floor for general questions you all might have. Um, as I mentioned before, we have a Slack community. We're going to be posting more examples, and you can have follow-up questions, do more in-depth dives into problems that you may have that we can help you out with uh, all in the Slack community. So I encourage you all to go over there for that. Awesome. So we're already seeing seven uh, responses, and they've all gone green for example three, but we are seeing less responses. So it might be good to just step back into the exerciser and quickly navigate through the great the variations of what you did there while mm -hmm. we're letting some questions come into the chat. Uh, sorry to interrupt Grant as you came on there too. Definitely. No worries. Um, we're just gonna say when we get to the point, if, if folks do wanna ask questions live, if we have some time, just feel free to use the raise hand feature in Zoom and we'll uh, take you off one by one. 
Great. Okay. So I'm going to briefly walk through the flow again and sort of the, the logic process of how we might get it. So what do we care about? We care about this campaign ID, right? Okay. So declarative, we need to find where that is. It's going to be in response dot uh, body dot data. And then it was a text, so dot text. Great. We see that there are three objects with the text key that exist in the uh, you know body data. The one that we actually care about is this one, right? And so to find a way to identify uh, just this one, we need to have a contains statement, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and add that contains statement. Contains, and then, oh, actually, this needs to be square brackets. Contains. The text is the key that we care about because we already have down to the text objects. And the, uh, excuse me, the key we care about is called text. And the actual text we care about is campaign ID, right? If we did something else here, Let's do markdown. What was it? Oh, I see. Right. So let's do let's do a different example. Type with markdown. You do type and then markdown. That's still going to give us all three, right? So you have to make sure that the contains value is unique. Text campaign. Lovely. So we have this. We then we want the dot text that gives us the actual string value. And to break down just this last piece that we want, that's where we bring in the substring. Substring after. Add the parentheses. We're going to go through and add the comma here. So what's the substring we actually care about? It's going to be. Uh, star campaign underscore id colon star space great and that's why you know using this sandbox is extremely useful because you can iterate pretty quickly through this uh and get it get it done in a clean fashion so this is the final number that we want if you're still having trouble with like the syntax or something reminder that in the example three uh we actually have for each individual stage that I've walked through here, we have solutions. So you can, if you're stuck on a specific area, excuse me, go to that, the query stage solution, start from there, see if you can get to the next step. Okay. Um, were there any further questions, Austin Grant? Chat's popping off. We're answering them as they come up. Um... But I think in terms of general questions, I, I feel like we're in good shape right now. What are you thinking, Grant? I would agree. I think we've we've gotten to most of them and we have a couple follow-ups on our side. Um, but if there are any other questions, folks can feel free to ask them in the chat or, or even raise your hand if you want to speak live. Cool. And then the only thing I would add is something that um, Mike from our team has been promoting in the chat to a few people is we do have some updated documentation. We'll be making sure to share that with everyone in the Slack community um, and in our follow up emails. And then we'll also be demoing a few of those common use cases. Uh, one use case that came up um, in the chat that is a great one is can you rename keys in JSON? And uh, that is something uh, I know we have built a few internal workflows using the JSON transformer to do that. So um, exactly, we'll, we'll be talking about some of those and, and hopefully, you know, everybody can share how else you're using this connector and, and inspire more use cases for that. But we'll definitely make sure there's some, some information about that one in the community. Elliot, I see your question. Uh, what would be the contains function to match an exact string? The contains is looking for, does it at least contain this value? So if you want to find an exact string, you could just include that exact string 
in this camp in this like text field right here. So if we get rid of this. Right. If you wanted to find the exact value here. That still works, right? Yep, and you can also do exact math. Um, and that's something that uh, we can make sure we add some content for uh, Elliot. We can make sure to, to have content for that so that it's clear and documented um, for you. And we'll post that in the community as well. No, oh, it's all good, Elliot. Thanks for asking the questions. Connor, I see your question. Are there plans to update the connector to have some basic functions or queries included so people who, have, who are newer to JSON Auto have a starting point? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. That's excellent feedback. Um, I can certainly follow up. Uh, if you go to our Slack community, we can follow up with more information there, but don't have it on hand. All right, I think the questions are slowing down. We haven't seen anybody else ping the the validation workflow. So I think we can probably wrap things up and, and take this to the community to continue the conversation. Great. Thank you everyone so much for attending, uh, for following along. There is a wrap up poll that we're posting. If you wouldn't mind filling it out before heading out, that we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, but thank you all for coming to the webinar. Thank you all for using Trey. We hope this is informative and helpful. Uh, and we look forward to seeing all the great things that you build with Trey in the future. Thank you very much.